In this video, I'll show you guys how to use one stone to kill two birds. And what I mean by that is, I will show you how to do the Laplace transform of sine of bt, and also the Laplace transform of cosine of bt with the following way, okay? And as I mentioned in the previous video, the Laplace transform that I like the most is going to be the Laplace transform of the function e to the at. Let me emphasize the a right here. And we did this already. We know the answer. This is 1 over s minus a. And a can be any number. And also, we know s has to be greater than a, but let me not worry about that for this video right here, all right? Anyways, a can be any number. It can be 0, it can be 1 half, it can be negative 2, negative 5, whatever you want. I can also plug in a complex value for a to make things out, to make things work out nicely. And what I'm going to do is, I'll write it down for you. I want to have the Laplace transform of E. And I will choose to plug in IB for A. So let me write it down. IB for A. And then we still have the T right here. Okay? Well, I plug in IB for A. I will also have to plug in IB for A right here, right? So we know this is equal to 1 over S minus IB. So I'll put this down carefully. IB. Okay, a few things that I have to remind you guys along the way. First, let's look at this. We have a complex exponent now, e to the i forever. And how can we deal with that? Well, we can use the Euler's method, right? The Euler's formula, I mean. So I'll write it down. We know the Euler formula is saying e to the i theta. This is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta theta, right? C-I-S. Well, if you pair things up carefully, this is my I, and now B-T will be my theta, isn't it? So, on the left-hand side, I will just use this. We will have the Laplace transform. By the Euler's formula, we know we will have cosine of the theta, which is the B-T here. So let me put it down right here. B-T and then plus i times sine of that, bt, okay? And this is very, very nice. And this is equal to that. And now, let me ask you guys, what did we used to do when we see some question like this? If you have 1 over 5 minus 2i back in your algebra class, what do we used to do with this? Well, you look at this and you multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate, 5 plus 2i, and then 5 plus 2i, right? And the point of doing this is that you can write this complex number into the standard form, a plus bi. So you just do that and then you finish this on your own, right? I will do this for you guys. Right here, let me multiply the bottom by the conjugate, which is s plus ib. And I'll do the same on the top as well s plus ib, okay? And now, let's see what do we end up with. On the top, let's do that first. 1 times this is nice and easy, which is s plus ib. That's great. That's wonderful. On the bottom, well, this is the difference of two squares, right? The formula. What I can do is s square, and then we'll have to minus this square, right? But you know we have minus. However, i times i is negative 1. So this becomes plus, right? i times i is negative 1, but then minus becomes plus. And you also have to square the b, so we have s squared plus b squared all together like that. You can distribute, you can work it out, but you end up with this anyways. Okay, now let me take care of the left-hand side for you. And here is the de uh, technical detail. The Laplace transformation, it's a linear operation. What that means is that I can break this apart. Well, we can do the Laplace of cosine bt and then Laplace transform of i sine bt, all right? And also, because i is a constant, I can factor that out. Let me show you what I mean by that. So what I can do is, because Laplace has linearity, 
So this is the same as Laplace of cosine bt first. And we can close that. And then we add it with, I will have Laplace of i sine bt. But as I said it, I can factor the i, so I'll put the i outside like this. And just think about it, Laplace, the definition for that is integral, so you can do these things with integrals. You can also do these kind of things with Laplace transform, all right? So we put the i on the outside, and then we have the Laplace transform of sine bt, okay? So that's what we have on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, this is also technically a complex number. I will split the fraction. First one, I will write it down as s over s squared plus b squared, all right? And next, I will put on plus, and let me put on i first, and then we will have b over s squared plus b squared, okay? And now, look at the left-hand side and look at the right-hand side. As you can see, this is technically the real part. It doesn't have any i. That means this has to match with that, isn't it? Congratulations, we got our answer for the Laplace transform of cosine bt, which is that. And let me write it down because I'm too excited for this already. This is s over s squared plus b squared, okay? And then you see, this is i times this. Well, this is i times that. That means this Laplace transform of sine bt has to be this, isn't it? So we have that as well. For sine bt, we will have b over s squared plus b squared, all right? So here are the results for the Laplace transform of sine bt and also cosine bt. Well, you should be able to do this with the definitions as well. You can check my previous video. I showed you guys how to do the Laplace transform of sine bt with the definition. And when you use the definition, you'll see that the condition that you need is s has to be greater than zero. And let me tell you that for this right here, we also have to have s greater than zero. I cannot really see it from here, but this is really nice because I can get the formula for you guys. But once again, get back to the definition so you can see s has to be greater than zero and s has to be greater than zero for the sine and cosine. Anyways, this is it. How wonderful.